I'm joined now by Dr. Stefan Bornstein, who is here to talk about the new clinical practice guidelines for adrenal insufficiency. Thank you so much for being here. So if we could talk about the highlights, what are some of the major changes in these new clinical practice guidelines? Well, first of all, let me say it's a really major um, achievement of the endocrine society to bring together an international panel of people um, trying to figure out and, and, and uh, put together these guidelines for an important disease such as adrenal insufficiency. And I guess um, the major outcome is, um, I would like to mention three points if I may, is that um, first of all we have to raise our level of suspicion for adrenal insufficiency. It's still overlooked too frequently. And that means you have to think about, think like a detective, and find and look for the signs, and then don't wait for the diagnosis. If you have the suspicion, suspicion, start treating right away. The second thing is that we really understood, and by looking at the given let literature and evidence, um, that we do have both diagnostic and therapeutic modalities that that do work. And um, finally, the third point is that. Um, Patients have to be monitored very well. And we have to do better education of our patients, also the doctors around, um, to know what to do in an adrenal crisis, to have their information on self-injection and also on monitoring of the disease and that all patients and also their relatives are well informed about what's going on. Do you think that was the biggest deficit, is the lack of diagnosis and treatment that really brought about these new guidelines? I think it's like for um, other endocrine diseases, at a certain point we have to look into what is the evidence in the meantime. There have been some changes, there are more and more medications coming up that can cause adrenal insufficiency. There's a change in causes, it's still most common is autoimmune disease, but also we know that HIV and the sequela and um, some of the medications attached to it may cause adrenal insufficiency. So we have to look and update that uh, every now and then. And also what I think is important for our clinical endocrinologists um, to have the guidelines at hand to look at certain specific situations. Not only adrenal crisis, but how to manage uh, adrenal insufficiency in the pediatric population or during pregnancy. And so that's what the guideline also put a special focus on. Are there better options for helping treat patients that you can make that information available to the clinicians through these new guidelines? I think the information um, in the guideline is out there and um, people should really carefully read it. And um, we had a bit of a debate also regarding some of the um, level of evidence. I guess for all endocrine diseases in general, especially the rarer ones, we don't have the number of randomized trials, the hardcore evidence that we would like to have. So it's always based on experience and uh, best practice to some extent. But for adrenal insufficiency, it's quite obvious that you have to monitor these patients well and you have to start treatment uh, right away. It's mandatory to perform treatment. So in that case, I think some of the things were quite straightforward. Setting up these new guidelines, it seems pretty obvious, but what are you hoping will be the short-term and then long-term implications? We do hope that we get a bit more evidence in the area um, where there's still questions open. Better diagnostics, maybe also some better treatment modalities. Some of the things we were looking into, what is quality of life? How do you define that? And for some of the treatments regarding um, DHA or some of the new formulas, we don't have the hard endpoints at this point in studies, and we need to know um, how important it is for patients. But definitely, also um, in addition to these hard endpoints, as we say, quality of life plays an important role, and we took that into consideration. Um, what I personally hope for the long term impact that we really manage uh, to get the information out that there is education, 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 both for the patients and relatives, but also for some of the practitioners, the intensivists around that sometimes know, don't know how to deal with this disease. Right. So getting these guidelines out there and then I think starting a larger discussion is truly going to help not just the clinicians, but really the patients. Yes. Thank Absolutely. you very much, Thank Dr. You. Bornstein.